Hi and welcome in this new video. Hope you're doing well. Hope your day is great. My name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer. And in today's video, I would like to tell you what is airflow. But before explaining what is airflow, we have to know what is an orchestrator. And for that, I have a beautiful analogy. So imagine that you want to make this chocolate cake. For that, you need some ingredients, sugar, flour, eggs, and obviously chocolate. But not only you need those ingredients, you need to put them in a specific order so you get this chocolate cake. Otherwise, you will get something else. So first, you put the flour, then the eggs, then the sugar, and finally the chocolate. But that's not it. Indeed, you need to put the ingredients in a specific order, but also you need to apply some transformations on those ingredients. For example, you need to mix the eggs with the flour, and maybe you need to break the chocolate in a certain way so you get a better chocolate cake at the end. Who knows? So to follow this recipe and get the chocolate cake, we need to make sure that everything is well executed in a specific order at the right time and in the right way. And for that, we need someone, something, and in this case, it's you. You are the chief, you are in charge of making sure that the recipe is well followed to get the chocolate cake. But in the context of orchestration, you is the orchestrator and the recipe is the data pipeline. So the goal of the orchestrator is to schedule tasks in the right way, at the right time, in a specific order, to get an output that you can use for something else at the end. In fact, a formal definition of an orchestrator is that it takes silo data from multiple storage locations to organize and combine these data in a way that at the end, you get something useful to run analyses and so on. If you take a typical data stack, you will see that the orchestrator sits next to the components of the data stack. Why? Because it orchestrates all of those components together to build your workflows. So back to Airflow, what exactly is Airflow? Well, looking at the official definition, you will see that Airflow is an open source platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor your workflows. It was created in 2014 at Airbnb and has been widely adopted by the data engineering community. The reason for that is because at that time, Airflow was the first orchestrator allowing you to programmatically author your data pipelines. We will see that in a second. So remember that with Airflow, you are able to author, schedule, and monitor your data pipelines. If you have a lot of data pipelines and you are doing things manually, well, you should forget about that and use Airflow instead. By the way, if you wonder why you should use Airflow, I did a video about that somewhere here. You will learn why Airflow. That said, there are many benefits of using Airflow. And the first one is Airflow is dynamic. Everything is coded in Python. So as long as you know Python, you are able to create data pipelines in Airflow and pretty much able to use Airflow as well. But let me show you an example of a workflow. So first thing first, you will need to make imports. In this case, we import DAG and task objects. Well, you don't know exactly what they are, but let's take a look at the next step, the workflow definition. And now you know that to define a workflow, you need to use a DAG object. So a DAG is a workflow. And then you need to specify some parameters that even if you don't know Airflow, I'm pretty sure you know what they mean. In this case, the start date, when you want to start scheduling the data pipeline, the 1st of January, 2023, then the schedule parameter, how often you want to trigger that data pipeline, daily, every day at midnight, a description and tags to better organize your workflows. Under the workflow definition, you define the tasks. In this case, you use the task decorator and you define the task extract, then transform and finally load. And under those tasks, you set the dependencies, the order in which you want to execute those tasks. If you step back and take a few seconds, you can realize that even if you don't know what is Airflow, you are pretty much able to understand what this workflow does just by reading it. And that's the beauty of using Python. But that's not the only thing. Indeed, as Airflow uses Python, well, you can be pretty creative with your workflows. You can generate workflows dynamically. You can create tasks dynamically on inputs that you don't know in advance. You can inject data at runtime when your tasks run. You can create data pipelines from YAML files and so on. There are so many things that you can do with Airflow and that's why it is so flexible and powerful. The second benefit of using Airflow is its scalability. Indeed, you can start very small with just a few tasks on your computer or you can scale Airflow up to thousands of tasks if you need to. In fact, with Airflow, you can run it on many different systems such as Dask, Kubernetes or Celery so you can run as many tasks as you want as long as you have 
enough resources and obviously the budget for that. Something else that I like about Airflow is how customizable it is. You want to change the user interface or add a new view, you can do that. You want to add functionalities on top of Airflow to interact with other tools, you can do that as well. You want to change the way your tasks are executed, same thing, you can do it. And that's the beauty of Airflow, you will never feel that you are stuck waiting for someone else to add something or update something, you can do it yourself and you can customize Airflow as much as you need. Something else is the UI. You can monitor and interact with your DAGs and tasks pretty easily. There is the grid view to monitor the states of your tasks and data pipelines over time. You also have the calendar view that helps to identify patterns over time, for example, if you see that your data pipelines are failing over weekends, you will be able to see that from this view. There is the gun view to spot any bottlenecks in your data pipelines. Then last but not least, the cluster view, which is really nice as you get this overview of your Airflow instance, data pipelines and task instances, as well as if the Airflow components are healthy or not. Obviously there are other views, but I wanted to give you a quick sneak peek of what you can do with user interface. That being said, it's time to move on the concepts. And the first most important concept in Airflow is DAG. What is a DAG? Directed acyclic graph. A DAG is a data pipeline in Airflow. So you have this graph with nodes A, B, C, D, and you can see the directed dependencies between those nodes. So D depends on B and C, and B and C depend on A. It is as simple as that. The other thing is there is no cycle in DAGs. So for example, on the right, this is not a valid DAG. Why? Because there is a cycle. You can see that A depends on C, C depends on D, D depends on B, and B depends on A. So you have this cycle and this is not a valid DAG. If you try to do that in Airflow, you will see an error on the UI. Now you know what is a DAG in Airflow. Again, it's a data pipeline, a workflow. A node is a task and that task is implemented using an operator. What is an operator? Think of an operator as a class, an object that encapsulates the action you want to perform on a specific tool. For example, you want to execute a bash command, you can use the bash operator for that. You specify the bash command you want to execute, as you can see on the top left corner. And if you want to execute a SQL request on Snowflake, then you can use the Snowflake operator for that. So the goal of operators is to help you performing actions that you want on specific tools. And there are many operators you can use. In fact, if you go on this link, let's say you want to execute a Python function, then you search for Python, and there is the Python operator right there. Then to use it, you can look at use module. You need to make the following import and use the code below. If you don't know what to put in the parameters, you have the descriptions right here. If you want to wait for, let's say, a file in S3 bucket, you can go back to the home page and search for F3 key sensor. And this time you can see how to wait for a file in a specific F3 bucket. So each time you wonder what operator to use to perform an action, take a look at this website. I'm sure it will help you. Okay, now you know that an operator is a task. If we go back to the previous workflow, you can see that the tasks here are using one operator, which is the Python operator. But you don't see that as we use the decorator notation. So the at task is in fact the Python operator behind the scene. And this is not available for all operators, but if you need to execute Python functions, remember that you can use this notation instead of the Python operator. All right, next, as soon as a DAG is scheduled by the scheduler, this DAG becomes a DAG run. A DAG run is an instance of a DAG of a data pipeline at a specific time. And when a task in this data pipeline is scheduled, that task becomes a task instance. It is an instance of a task at a specific time in a DAG run. And now you know the most important concepts in Airflow. Next, the components. What about the components? If you run Airflow for the first time, you will have a few components. And the first one is the web server. Airflow needs a web server to render the user interface. If you don't use the web server, you won't have access to the user interface. It is as simple as that. Also the scheduler, obviously the scheduler is the heart of Airflow. You need to make sure that the scheduler runs so you can schedule your tasks and your data pipelines. If the scheduler goes down, you won't be able to trigger any tasks. In addition, the metadatabase. The metadatabase is any database compatible with SQL Alchemy, which is a Python library, such as Postgre, MySQL, and so on, to store the metadata related to your DAG runs, task instances, users, and so on. Without the metadatabase, you cannot run Airflow. Then last but not least, 
the trigger, which is a special component only to handle a special kind of operators. Don't be confused with that for now. The most important components are the web server, the scheduler, and the metadatabase. In addition, those components can be highly available, which means you can have multiple web server instances, scheduler instances, metadatabase instances. So if one of the components goes down, you still have the other, so you make sure that your Airflow is still running. Now, you know what is Airflow, you know the components of Airflow, you know the concepts of Airflow, what about what Airflow is not? And the first thing is, Airflow is not a streaming solution. Airflow is designed to handle batch-oriented workflows and not streaming-oriented workflows. If you need streaming data pipelines, then you need to take a look at another tool. Don't try to define a scheduling interval as low as one second, that won't work. Last but not least, in my opinion, Airflow is not a data processing framework. If you need to process gigabytes or terabytes of data, I think it's better if you use a solution like Spark instead of Airflow. You can process your data in Airflow, but usually you don't have the same amount of resources for Airflow than for a processing framework like Spark, because you expect that your data processing framework needs a lot of resources to process your data, whereas with Airflow you expect that it just triggers tools to perform the actions, to perform the data processing, and the data processing will be done on those tools like Spark. Again, it's my opinion, but if you process the data in Airflow, just be careful, you can end up with memory overflow errors if you don't have enough resources to process the data. So that's it about Airflow. Now you know exactly what is Airflow, what Airflow is not, what are the concepts of Airflow, as well as the components of it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That will help me a lot. And I see you for another one. Take care.